One of the weirdest concepts out there stems from Honeywell's Aerospace. It is a multi-directional spherical motor, which is kind of like a gyroscope, and theoretically it can eliminate the need for extra motors. Unfortunately this motor has not been developed just yet, and it still remains in the design phase for now. Anyways, there are many different types of electric motors coming out. Quite a few bold claims are being made, and we should be a little bit skeptical when we see new strange designs. So let's begin the list and let's look at 7 new electric motors. At number 7, the Yamaha Electric Crate Motor. This permanent magnet synchronous motor was just revealed, and it's meant for smaller vehicles. And this motor might be successful as more people are tackling on EV conversions for their cars. The end product will vary between 35 to 200 kilowatts, which is also around 270 horsepower. And Yamaha will customize the design to specific orders. Now this motor just came out, so not too much is known about the specific numbers and its power to weight ratio. At number 6, the Electric GT. Yet another company has come out with a build kit, and this one is pretty straightforward. The motor, control modules, relays, sensors, and even the batteries are all built into the unit. So there are currently two versions right now, with the biggest one being the 353. And this one offers 260 horsepower with 350 foot-pounds of torque. The block weighs 500 pounds along with the batteries weighing around 375 pounds. The company is also trying to streamline the swapping process by making transmission adapters. But keep in mind that these only work with manual transmissions and an automatic transmission would likely blow up into a million pieces. So in a previous video I did talk about the difference between axial and radial motors. Radials are pretty easy to design and you usually see them everywhere, but axials generally have more efficient topiology. So companies are starting to use more axial designs for better power to weight ratios. Now usually you can tell the difference between an axial and radial motor just by looking at it because axials are more flat because of their topiology, where radials are usually elongated and they look more kind of like a cylinder shape. Now if you watched my previous motor video then you probably have heard about the Magnax motor. It's actually one of the most efficient axial flux designs, and it can achieve 15 kilowatts per kilogram, which is a really good ratio. It uses two rotors on either side of the stator, and this drives the magnetic flux through the stator core. The design also reduces copper windings considerably when compared to a radial motor design. Models do range from 25 to 500 kilowatts, so it is pretty scalable. So now that we did an overview of the two different types of motors, I'm going to get into this weird one which is called the HET. And a smaller company has designed this new type of three-dimensional flux rotor machine. It basically combines radial and axial designs into a magnetic torque tunnel. And with all four sides having the same polarity, the field interactions maximize torque output. It's also electric drive so it just uses an electronic transmission. And this is achieved by moving the end rotors so that it weakens the magnetic field and torque. So theoretically the HET is efficient at high and low RPMs, but I'm going to be really interested in the development of this motor. At number 4, the Infinitum Motor. Well, I thought I have seen everything when it comes to electric motors, but this one is completely different, and it replaces metal windings with a printed circuit board. This also means that the sensors can be incorporated onto the same board, and ultimately it can reduce up to 60% of its weight. The smaller variant can achieve 3600 RPM and deliver up to 30 horsepower. But once again, this is a really new motor, and we're just gonna have to wait for the real numbers. At number 3, the CR Axial. Yet another weird design involves two opposing discs, which can either rotate in parallel or in the opposite direction. Each disc contains permanent magnets that follow the rotating magnetic field, and the rotation is controlled either by a hull or optical sensor. The company claims that the design saves energy, decreases heat, and improves efficiency. Models range from 10 to 50 kilowatts, with the biggest variant handling 4 meter opposing rotating propellers. So they are pretty big models and you would likely not be able to put this on your drone or anything like that. That's number 2, the Ampere. A collaboration effort between Haida and Equipmake intends to produce a 22 kilowatt per kilogram motor. Now that's a really extreme number, and it's about 40% higher than its next competitor, so I'm not sure if they can actually do this. 
But anyways, the metal structure will be constructed using additive manufacturing. And this will reduce the weight a little bit, along with making a more thermal efficient design. Whether or not this will actually give a staggering 22 kilowatts per kilogram is still debatable. But regardless, it's going to be exciting to see the first few prototypes roll out next year. Hatch number one, the QFM-360. This is a really extreme motor, which is 17 inches in diameter and able to produce over 1000 kilowatts or 1300 horsepower. That is almost three times the power of a Model 3. Now this motor would basically make any car instantly a flying bullet, so Hyperpower teamed up with Top EV Racing and mounted four of these electric motors on a dragster. The performance estimates include 0 to 124 miles per hour in 0.8 seconds and a top speed of 380 miles per hour. This motor has just come out, so I don't really have the official numbers, but it does look like an actual design and I kind of think that they shortcutted some of the thermal cooling capabilities. Naturally, there are a lot of companies interested in this motor, so we're just going to have to wait and see what the real numbers are. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.